everyone, welcome back to the channel. I haven't shared enough on the Land Cruiser this year, and unfortunately, a lot of the projects have just taken more time than I thought, or I've had to go back and redesign some things. But I wanna give you an update just to show you what I've done so far to it, so that I can look back on these and you all can kind of see a uh, latest and greatest video on the Land Cruiser. So if you're not familiar, I have a 2015 Toyota 4Runner and then I have this 1996 FZJ80 80 series Land Cruiser. It's the gas engine version in the United States here. And I've done a fair amount to the kind of core of this vehicle, I'll say. Um, still working on really decking it out for camping and making it into something that I can really enjoy and take on trips. Um, but right now, I've got a set of different things on here. Probably the biggest to note is the 37s and everything to go along with that. So with that being said, we'll kind of just walk through a bit of the exterior first, and then I'll show you some of the things I've done to the interior. And if you have any specific questions, feel free to leave them down below. Otherwise, I've probably got a video on them that I've posted or might be coming shortly. So with that being said, let's kind of come here to the front of the vehicle and we'll talk through some of these front end modifications. All right, so up front here, we have the Descent Off-Road. Um, I think they only have a single type or series or style for uh, Land Cruisers. Otherwise, they may have just came out with like a high clearance front and rear bumper. This is their original front bumper. Uh, we've got these plates here for a three inch fog light. And then I opted to not do the triple hoops because I just like the clean look of this. I've got a Badlands 12K uh, winch and these are flush mounted Diode Dynamics SS3s, uh, the pro version in an amber fog SAE approved. And then uh, let's see what else do we have up front here. No skid plates yet, but I would like to get them eventually. Um, the lights and everything are all OEM. This grill is actually uh, one off of a turbo diesel grill, I think from Dubai, ordered it on eBay. I really wanted to have the Toyota letters here. So it wasn't too difficult to retrofit this, but it's also not like super sturdy. You can kind of see it wiggles a little, but it works just fine. All right, then on the side here, these are zero offset RR6 uh, hybrid rims from Relation race wheels, they've got their black powder coated beadlock rings on 37 by 12 and a half inch by 17 low D Baja Boss ATs from Mickey Thompson. These are awesome. I'm running two inch spacers in the front and the rear so that these like wheels can actually clear the hubs. These have some sort of unique hubs where the center bore sticks out quite a ways. Um, that's the wheel setup on here. The suspension is a little bit intricate. I'll put links down in the description, uh, but what it's running is I believe they're, it's their six inch lift shock absorbers, uh, and then it's three and a half inch lift dual rate springs. And uh, we have the MRR front steering dampener and a bunch of other things to get everything to fit. The front radius arms are from Delta Vehicle Systems. They're their 3L version. They move the axle forward a little bit so that you can clear 37s a little bit better. Uh, the front and rear are both locked, or I guess it's technically triple locked. It's also got a center locker. The front locker on this was a little bit finicky, so we swapped it out for an Eaton electronic locker. Uh, this is also re-geared to 529s, which is a little bit over-geared. Probably would ideally be running 38s, but it's no problem really to run 37s still. Um, let's see what else up front here. Uh, that's kind of everything. Other than that, I've got Timbrin bump stops in the front and the rear, and I'm running some extended brake lines from the Metal Tech 4x4. Um, that's kind of for the suspension in the front. Uh, up here, we have the Yoda Tech and just some Amazon uh, mirror and sort of ditch light set up here with the Diode Dynamics SS3 Pros. And these are the driving combo, I believe, in a white with an amber backlight. Before we talk about the rear setup, I'll talk about the roof rack. So this is a gutter mounted rack system. Uh, it's a little bit more rare to come by because a lot of the modern racks on the market right now just bolt to the roof at anchor points that are OEM, and it makes it fairly easy. Actually pinching onto this gutter rack seems to be a little bit of a design challenge for companies to where there's not a ton of rack options on the market. Um, but Sherpa was up to the task and they made this LaSalle rack. 
I absolutely love the rack. I think it looks really sharp. These gutter mounts are not overbearing and the side plate here still looks awesome. Up front here, I have a sport like output level uh, Diode Dynamics SS5 Crosslink system. There's eight pods and this is the driving lens. So they're a white output with an RGB backlight I just typically have set to amber. All right, last but not least here in the rear is the Descent Off-Road rear bumper. I really like this rear bumper. It's super sharp. It's a high clearance bumper. It's not their ultra high clearance line, but I still think it looks really good. It's got the swing out. So we've got a triple jerry can arm here and then the spare on the other side. Running the same exact wheels in the back. Obviously, the only difference in the rear is that there is aftermarket upper and lower rear control arms from Dobinson that allows you to center this rear wheel within the wheel well. The last thing we have in the rear is the Delta Vehicle Systems pan hard bar correction. So we're running an aftermarket pan hard bar from Dobinson's, but also have the pan hard angle correction kit from Delta Vehicle Systems. And then also that uh, rear extended brake lines from Metal Tech 4x4. Uh, and likewise, also have the 529 gears in the rear because when you go to re-gear your differentials, you have to run the same gear ratio front and rear. So uh, they're Yukon 529s, if you're curious and the rear is still the OEM locker, works great. Something that I kind of did myself, kind of did based on some things I saw online, I think it was on I Hate Mud, is I cut out a spot here in this vent that routes down through some grommeted holes behind this venting. And these are KC wire hiders, and this allows me to run two power cables, one to my chase lights right up here, and another up the rack to the front to my SS5s. So this is the back of the Land Cruiser. It is a split hatch system, which I think is awesome. And it's a real bummer that this isn't used more on SUVs. I absolutely love having this drop down tailgate area to sit or prep food or whatever. Uh, we do have a little table here on the descent off-road rear bumper swing out for the spare. Other than that, the whole interior of the Land Cruiser is completely gutted. Uh, there's really nothing going on in here that's too interesting. I've done a full sound deaden throughout the whole vehicle. So I'm in the process of routing a lot of electrical and other things uh, for building out of the rear. So we've got uh, full sound deadening and insulation and I've added in this wool padding where the old carpet padding was. So I'm trying to remove some of that older stuff that kind of makes the vehicle smell and really trying to get the inside a lot quieter going down the road. I'm also doing a full uh, I think it's Alpine speaker upgrade system within here. So uh, a lot of cool stuff to kind of modernize the vehicle while keeping it look OEM. Uh, there's a sweet uh, amplifier system I've found that allows you to connect to it Bluetooth or have a feed from the OEM radio. So I can keep the OEM radio and just the whole vintage look. But if I want to run you know, music or anything off of my phone, I can connect to the hidden amplifier and run it through the speakers. So. We're working on putting in a 10 inch subwoofer and then just upgrading all the speakers and the doors. And I think it's really gonna make a huge difference. So right now, nothing too crazy inside of here. Just got some traction boards. I got one of my Rome cases. This is the 125 liter uh, with some recovery gear and then my EcoFlow battery back here just so that I have some power in the vehicle. So that's all in the rear. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the engine slash uh, front seat and that'll be everything. So let's jump up to the front. All right, so up front here, uh, this is still fairly OEM, but we've got a couple things here. We've got a scan gauge. Um, this is one of the Alpine speakers that we put in here and then uh, working on running some of the trigger wires for the Switch Pros. I'm running a wits end uh, bracket for my Switch Pros. And then I've routed this little ethernet port for a Midland radio. Uh, but everything is still kind of in the works. As you can see, there's no center console. So still working on routing everything and leaving it as torn apart as I can until I've got everything ready to go and then I'll put them in at the last minute. Let's take a look under the engine bay and I'll show you the power system so far. Land Cruisers come OEM with a, a dual battery system, but this is a 24F uh, full throttle battery. This is the starter battery and I'm running some SDHQ billet uh, battery terminals. These are awesome for just running tons of stuff uh, off of your batteries. I'm still waiting on installing a Blaze off-road bracket and uh, Red Arc BCDC system that will connect to the dual battery system. So right now 
it's disconnected. I prioritize the Forerunner setup over the Land Cruiser setup, but the Land Cruiser setup is coming as well. Here we've got a Group 35, and then I bought this dual battery kit from Delta Vehicle Systems. They sell some of the OEM parts that you need to put this in. So this is uh, another set of SDHQ battery terminals, and then a Blue Seas fuse block with a Group 35 full throttle battery. I've retrofitted a Forerunner power trays bracket here to run a small uh, fuse block and the switch pros but for now it's kind of just laying in here for the time being and to do all of this you'll have to relocate the OEM windshield washer reservoir so that is moved back here with a Delta Vehicle Systems bracket that you can buy from their website. So that is basically everything going on under the engine bay. The winch control box is probably the last thing in here. This is from the Harbor Freight Badlands 12,000 pound synthetic line winch and What's pretty slick is I was just able to mount it to the side of this dual battery box. We've got the wired connection plug right here, the switch for that and everything. And it's super accessible and it's out of the way. So yeah, this has worked pretty sweet. All right, well, that's gonna be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll continue to post Land Cruiser videos when I can. I'm hoping to dig into some of the kind of tedious modification work this winter. Uh, I try to keep the Land Cruiser parked in the winter so that it doesn't get rusty. It is a California vehicle, so even though I'm in Minnesota and the roads are horrible and they destroy vehicles, the Land Cruiser really hasn't seen much of that and I'm hoping to keep it that way so I can keep this vehicle for a long time. So I think the work so far I've done is pretty sweet. It really runs 37s nicely and I'm looking forward to using it more in the future, but I'm trying to take my time and not rush anything so that I can really build it out correctly from the get-go. So. Learned a lot of lessons building out my Forerunner, and uh, to build it right takes time, and that's what I'm trying to do. So, thank you so much for the support. I really appreciate it. Um, stay tuned. I've got a Forerunner walk around coming soon as well, so that I can kind of show you all what I've done over the past year, and you can see how my build is continuing to progress. So, thank you so much. I'll catch you all in the next video.